STEM uh, is about amplification, um, automatic test amplification uh, at, at three levels and developing tools to help with uh, amplifying existing test suites. So at the level of the unit test, and I will talk about mutation testing here, at the level of uh, environment testing, configuration testing, how to verify that your software works uh, uh, in production on various configurations, and uh, at quality protection testing, it, we call it also online testing, it's when you have crashes in production, how can you get help with producing the problems? So on XWiki, this is our current status before, uh, actually not before, a bit in between we stand. We have about 70% uh, test coverage. We have about 10,000 uh, plus uh, tests in total that take 2.5 hours. We use <coughs> unit testing with Mokito, integration tests, and functional tests with uh, Selenium. So that's where we are. That's our, our status. Well, what's seen so far is that mutation testing highest code that definitely is tested. If you have a mutant that's killed, you know that your test suite can definitely detect bugs of that type at that location. It gives you a very high degree of confidence in a test suite. Occasionally you can actually find bugs. Um, if your problem was almost correct, it might turn out actually the mutant version is correct. You come to examine the mutant, wonder why it's surviving, check a look and think, oh actually hang on, that's what, that's what I want to draw along, I, I messed up. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And it effectively tests your tests. It's the only technique I know of that can test your tests. Nothing else out there can do this that I'm aware of. Apart from writing tests, your tests, your tests, your tests. <coughs> Which means you can now change your test suite without fear. You know for a fact that your test suite still works in the same way that your test suite lets you know your code still works. Nothing else lets you do this. So, clearly this is a brilliant idea. What happened to it? Well, back in 1971, we had Lipton's student paper. <laughs> Just nine short years later, <laughs> the first automated tool. Now, this breakneck pace continued into the 80s. <laughs> Lots of research papers in this period. Now, Richard Lipton actually wasn't involved. He went on to do interesting things with DNA computing. He won, oh, he won something big a couple of years ago, but not, wasn't involved in mutation testing. But other people have been researching this since the 70s. Now, one of the first sort of research questions they asked was, oh, this all sounds great, but if a test suite can find artificial bugs, does that mean it can find real ones too? Now, we have some new questions that we try to, to answer. Uh, the first one is, um, are we testing enough? Are there parts of the code that is not tested at all? Um, and how can we ensure that, um, that globally um, the quality of the code doesn't go down? So this is one question. And also, how good are our tests? That's part of the quality. It's not just the quality of the code, but also the quality of the tests. And that's what, uh, that's what Harry uh, introduced is uh, how do you know if your tests are good? And how do you keep them good? Uh, the, the other question is, do my software work in various setups? Um, and as I said, how do I reproduce bugs found in production? 